Uh, to everyone out there, again, thank you for doing the right stuff. But uh, sadly, we lost another Omni County resident. He was in his 70s and he had underlying health conditions. Uh, to the 121 families that lost loved ones through these tough times, our condolences and prayers go out to you. Uh, to the new family, as always, you know, in the beginning it was a little bit tougher to say goodbye because you couldn't have a typical wake or funeral services. Now they're open, uh, a little different, socially distancing, and they've, they've done the right stuff. Um, like I said before, I was at Cannon Funeral Home, and uh, they did a great job. And I know all the funeral homes are doing a great job because we haven't heard anything. So it's good that you can do that. But it is tough to lose anyone, especially these times. But today, there's now 2,079 positive cases of uh, COVID-19, 612 people under mandatory quarantine, and we have another increase of 13 positive cases, the same since yesterday. Uh, so we went from 44 to 13 to 13 again. We know that four of those cases have been traced back to the Hudson Avenue party, which uh, brings the total from that party up to 15 positive so far. We also know that from today's positives, four health Four were healthcare workers and two others had traveled to states that they shouldn't have gone to. There are now 78 active cases in Albany County. 6,310 people have completed quarantine and of those 2,001 tested positive for the virus have recovered. That's an increase of 19 recoveries and there are now two people hospitalized with a hospitalization rate of 0.09%. Uh, and actually it's the same as yesterday, which is, which is good news, and the two people be, um, being the same is also good news. There's zero people in ICU, uh, which is also good news, and our hospitalization rate and everything else is staying steady, even though we're starting to see an uptick like we did uh, throughout the beginning of this, uh, the coronavirus, um, but we're not seeing the hospitalizations, which is great, you know, for whatever reason. Our last five day average is 16.4 uh, new positive cases each day. That's down by like 0.4, which is good because yesterday it was at 16.8. Um, you know, again, we're saying to anyone that um, who's at the 4th of July party in Albany, you know who you are, you know, the, there was over 200 people, please go out and get tested. If you don't even have signs and symptoms, we're asking you to do the right thing, go to our health department, call them. Uh, get tested, uh, be part of the solution, not part of the problem going forward. And to everyone that wants to gather, just remember, socially distance, keep your mask on if you're closer than six feet, uh, cough into your arms and uh, con continue to clean your hands. Um, it's not asking a lot of people. You can go to UOBNY or you can go to Seth Q Arena to get tested, area, you can call that number, area code 188. 364-3065 and as always we have our mobile testing sites up and running area code 518-465-4771 and the drive through again we gave that number out but Rite Aid go to Rite Aid and Colony but you can go online RiteAid.com uh, also you can set up through there and our priority one testing in Gilliland that number is 518-867-8040 um, as always, Priority One will do the uh, testing there as also. So we have great partners out there in the community. Please utilize them. They're right around the corner for you. Um, some of the other things we talked about besides social distancing and coughing into your elbow and all that's good stuff is the rail trail. We were getting a lot of complaints on the rail trail. Look, uh, if you're gonna walk the rail trail and you're by yourself, you don't have to have the mask on. If you're with family members, you don't have to have the mask on. But when you walk by other people that are going by you, just have a mask handy to put on. Again, be courtesy to the people going by you um, to not just protect your family, but to protect them also. So uh, we're, we're saying to the people out there, and there's a lot of people using the rail trail, which we do like, but we want to just make sure when you use the rail trail, you do it safe and uh, protect not just the people around you, but the people going by. So please keep that in mind. Uh, some guidance came out on restaurants yesterday. We got a lot of questions on this. Uh, you know, um, one of which is, look, if you go into a restaurant, you can't sit at a bar if you're not eating food. You got to be six feet apart. Uh, there has to be barriers in between you and you got to be eating food. Um, so it's a little bit different. I know there's a lot of violations they had in New York City. And look, 
Um, it's we didn't get that type of complaint here in our in our capital district in our control room, uh, but again, uh, again, it's, it's their playing field, their rules. So uh, I know it's more addressed at New York City, but they're affecting the whole region. And we, you know, some of the questions we got in the, uh, before the control room was, I thought it was supposed to be directed by control room or regions, uh, and if one person sets back, we don't all have to do it. But look, it, that's that's the way it is. Um, and uh, I will say to anyone that has any problems, please, uh, <clears throat> you can go on the website of www.sla.newyork.gov. Uh, you can take a picture, you can send it there, you can talk about the violation if you have an issue. Uh, again, it's about protecting the workers and the restaurant, the people in the restaurants and bars, uh, but the consumers too coming in. So, uh, you know, please, you know, only do it if there's a problem. And uh, we do get people that just say stuff and we check in on it. It's a, it's a waste of resources in time if we have to go uh, chase us down. And we, we, some of it we find that people had issues with that bar or that restaurant and they're just causing problems. But um, so that has to be addressed going forward. And um, so any businesses in Omni County not trying, um, trying to recover from this public health and safety impact of COVID-19 and economy fallout, uh, that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. And uh, I'm lucky enough to get Steve Aquario here to talk about some of the stuff that NYSAC's been doing, not just, I, I don't wanna say here just in Omni County across the state of New York, but across this nation. And uh, we've been on a lot of phone calls together, uh, Steve, on a variety of stuff. But like I said on Monday, I shared with a little bit of uh, everyone, our second quarter from 2019 was down $15.5 million. That's a huge impact on our budget and not just Omni County's budget, but the budget of the town, cities, and villages moving forward, um, you know, even though if you cert you saved and you put money aside for different things, uh, it does make it challenging going forward. So these are things we have to continue to talk about, roll up our sleeves in this health crisis, and now we have an economy crisis. You got two going on. Some of the good stuff, I think it was Eric uh, Anderson, if I say it correctly, from the Times Union Center, or I was gonna say China, I just put you at our Times Union Center, from the TU paper, that uh, wrote a great article that you know there was a you know less people filing for unemployment down. We had 75,000 people in the re capital district without jobs. It's around 55. It's good stuff because as you see, as we're in that phase four and we're opening up, more people are going back to work, which is all uh, good stuff. But Congress uh, goes back to uh, D.C. on Monday. They're talking about the fifth stimulus package, and uh, it needs to have more for local governments. Um, as president of County Executives of America and president of New York State County Associations uh, of NISAC, I hear from my counterparts across the state as we continue to talk about what we're all looking together, you know, how we're rolling up our sleeves, what are we gonna do with our budgets going forward? And some of the stuff, you know, uh, I've, they've talked about was, you know, obviously refinance and debt, short-term borrowing, TANS. We used to do that in 2015 from the 08, 09 recession. We used to borrow $15 million when I took over as county executive just to make payroll. People are looking at that limited training to only what's mandatory. Um, some counties are also considering even harder decisions like closing parks, steep budget cuts, even layoffs people are looking at. Uh, no one wants to do this. No one wants to make these decisions. Uh, but, you know, these are things that we have to look at as we move forward as a group. So uh, one of the things, you know, we need the president and Congress to do the right thing, to take action. And it's a matter of fairness, to be quite honest with you. It's a matter of fairness as we go forward. Uh, I know the state, the governor's done a great job lobbying the fact that what the state needs to go forward. Uh, but we need to be into this as a partnership. The state gets shortfall. They can't pass it down to the counties in October through the next budget process and expect us to survive moving forward. Uh, there's a $2 trillion uh, coronavirus stimulus package that passed earlier this year, but it only affected localities with 50, over 500,000 population. That doesn't help us. So these are things that we address and we address on a national and state level. Level. But the majority of the 150 billion put aside for state, local, and uh, governments actually just went to states. Um, and uh, smaller localities like Omni County gets nothing. And we're on the front line of this, as Dr. Whelan and I have had said numerous times. So the way the CARE Act was written, it turned states and counties against each other. We need leadership. We need unity. We need to come together. We don't need to be finger pointing. We need to work together. This is about getting us through this and uh, not pointing at the president, Congress, Senate, uh, I get state officials. Uh, we just really need to say, hey, what's best for the people going forward and continue to how we work going through this uh, COVID 
COVID-19 and continue to do stuff like that. Um, but I did want to bring, uh, I don't want to take up all the time because that's why I have Steve here. He has some slides to go. Again, Steve Aquario is the executive director of NISAC. Steve, thank you for coming back and, and taking the time. I know last time you are here was about four months ago, I think. It feels like four years ago because, again, we're in the 19th week of this, uh, I think 127 days. So, uh, Steve, please talk about it what you want to. Thank you, County Executive McCoy. It's nice to uh, be with you again uh, in person in this virtual world that we're living in. And a, and a thank you to uh, and hello to Dr. Whalen, uh, Albany County's Public Health Commissioner. Uh, it's uh, it's a long time, County Executive. Uh, we're we're almost five six months into this COVID-19 pandemic in Albany County. Uh, I think uh, it's important for us to know uh, and to to realize that we're going to be in this for a long time. Uh, that uh, we're five months in, we're, we're going to go the rest of 2020, uh, likely wearing masks, following public health protocol, and doing the right thing. And I think people need to really understand that this is not a one and done type uh, of, a, of a crisis here. Uh, we're, we're seeing that around the country with the other states uh, and the rising spikes that they're experiencing. And I just want to commend you, County Executive McCoy, for the steadfast leadership that you have shown to the people of Albany County. Uh, to the people of the state of New York and all that you've shared with uh, the, the other counties across the state and across this nation in your leadership capacity in both the state association and the national association of county executives. That's how we got through this, helping each other. And your ongoing uh, way of communicating to the people of Albany County and Dr. Whalen uh, and her contribution on really bringing a public health uh, uh, perspective to this in addition to the government administration that's how it worked and uh, the two of you are leaders in this state and leaders in the United States and I just want to say thank you as an Albany County resident for all that the two thank of you, you are Steve. doing I appreciate that to, to, to truly keep us safe uh, and, I, and I mean that uh, so counties uh, have been running testing facilities like Albany County, the counties across the state, conducting tracing operations as Dr. Whalen has gone over with the people of Albany County, managing quarantine enforcement and support operations, leading a 24-7 emergency response and a 911 system, providing food assistance to families and seniors in needs and school children and working with the school districts of Albany County and how to safely reopen school districts when and if they will open. But at the same time, counties have faced an economic quadruple threat of declining local sales tax, hotel occupancy taxes, higher spending necessary to respond to the health emergency, a loss of state reimbursement, and an economic lockdown. So right now, we're in the middle of an unprecedented times, which is creating uncertainty. The unknown duration of the public health crisis that Dr. Whalen has been here every day, that County Executive McCoy has been here every day for approaching six months now, we don't know how long this is gonna go. We had a public health crisis, we now have an economic crisis. The state of New York is estimating a $13 billion budget deficit. The state of New York has projected over four years that that budget deficit grows to $60 billion. Counties also face significant revenue losses, potentially as high as $2 billion. And when state reimbursement cuts are added, that could grow to $3.5 billion in 2020. Over two years, we're now talking about $5 billion in economic injury to the counties across this state. It's not just about revenue losses. That's just the beginning. Counties will also face mid-year state aid cuts, and County Executive McCoy is trying to manage his way through that, state aid reimbursement delays. Many counties are experiencing immediate and lasting increasing spending needs to address the public health and the social welfare emergency. Higher costs into the future are likely in the state, which will also lead towards pressure as we go through these next few years, including the impact on the New York State and local employee retirement system. Some key points related to local revenues and state aid, sales tax, could decline between $780 million to nearly $2 billion for the counties just outside New York City, depending on the severity of this downturn. In addition, occupancy taxes, 
hotel, motel taxes, a loss between 50 and $80 million. Gaming, Rivers Casino is right near Albany County and Schenectady County, New York, and video lottery terminal revenues with the shutdown of that facility also approaches $100 million in economic injury, and state reimbursement and aid could fall between $600 million to $1.5 billion all across the state. So in Albany County, we were expecting a robust economy due to the efforts of Albany County Executive Dan McCoy. Albany County was in solid fiscal condition. The economy was in good shape. We were anticipating a revenue increase in sales tax. We were increasing a revenue increase in hotel occupancy taxes. The economy of Albany County was strong going into 2020. But as we see, and the county executive talked about an injury of 15 million, that Albany County could even experience a $25 million hit or almost a 10% decline in sales tax alone in a mild economic injury. If, if you take that to a severe injury, the county of Albany alone could look at a loss of sales tax approaching 60 million or about 22% under a severe recession scenario. Through June of 2020, Albany County's sales tax is more than 15 million lower as County Executive McCoy than the same period last year. And all of that injury occurred in three months. The drop in sales tax cash for Albany County has been higher than the average in the other counties of the state. This is influenced by Albany County sources of sales tax compared to the other counties. Restaurants have been the second highest source of sales tax in Albany County for the past five years. In addition, clothing, department stores, general merchandise, and travel and accommodations also rank more highly in Albany than the other counties. These sectors have been more severely impacted under the lockdowns, and they represent about 25% of Albany County's sales tax. That's why we need the federal government to act. As County Executive McCoy has talked about, there's only so much this county can do to continue to serve the people, to continue to go to local property taxpayers, to continue to go to business owners. Counties are seek, seeing temporary cuts to critical programs like mental health, and addiction services, social services, infrastructure needs. And without federal aid, these cuts may become permanent. The House and the Senate and the President have acted to pass four pieces of legislation. They've addressed public health funding to support prevention and preparedness and response efforts. They've addressed research and development for vaccines, which are critical to the outcome of where we sit today. They've addressed the Family First Coronavirus Response Act for free coronavirus testing, a billion in nutrition assistance programs, and increasing Medicaid spending, or FMAP. They've addressed uh, the CARES Act for large counties over 500,000 in population. Albany County is under 500,000 population, and it is not able to access the U.S. CARES Act. The Congress has provided a Paycheck Protection and Health Care Act, but what the Congress has not done is to provide revenue loss assistance to local governments and to the state of New York. New York counties need $5 billion over a two-year period just to make them whole from the injury that we will have sustained in 2020 and 2021. That's why we need the House, the Senate, the President to come together to develop consensus to provide direct and flexible funds to the local governments of this state and to the state of New York. And I applaud County Executive McCoy for his steadfast leadership to bring the message of this injury, not just to the people of Albany County, but to the people of the state of New York and to the people of the United States. In his work with Congress, we work with Congressman Tonko, with Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, we're on calls on a weekly basis. Next week, by midweek, we anticipate Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell from the state of Kentucky to introduce legislation that will extend unemployment insurance, likely not include the $600 bonus that goes along with the current unemployment assistance. We expect legislation to continue the payroll protection program, the PPP program that has helped small businesses keep their employees. Uh, but what we need to see 
is direct assistance so that county, local public health departments can retain, attract, and recruit nurses and staff to properly run local health departments. What we need to see is revenue for the state and revenue loss uh, monies for state and local governments. And what we need to see is assistance for wastewater treatment, surveillance, and environmental health, public health surveillance funding. So County Executive McCoy, again, thank you for having me here and thanks for all that you do to keep us safe. Thank you, Dan. Steve, thank you and to your organization. It is depressing after we talk because it's, you know, look, it, we, we got a tough time ahead of us. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We can get through this together and we need to get through this together. And, you know, we got a tough road and we need to work together with the federal government and state and all the other counties uh, to do this together. And that's what I love about New York State. I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. We're at our best when we get knocked down and we come back stronger and we can do this together. Uh, but things are gonna change. And as the workforce changes, as outside businesses change, uh, a lot of things are gonna change and we're gonna have to operate differently uh, to get through this crisis. Because, um, you know, uh, taxing your way out of it's easy, but right now people need help and they need relief. So. Uh, we have to be careful as we move forward together as a group. Um, I also want to say to uh, all the businesses, as always, you can get your PPE and hand sanitizer from the Time Union Center, uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can call 518-487-2023. Uh, it's behind Market Street, behind the uh, Time Union Center. Also, Sheriff Sapples EOC has all that stuff. They can get out to businesses also. So um, also I'll remind people that uh, we have the uh, mental health available for you. It's seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., area code 518-269-6634. And uh, as always, we have the 24-hour um, sexual assault hotline, 518-447-7716. Please call that and, uh, if you need to. And then also our 211 and the state hotline, as always. Um, I know there were some school reopening guidelines that were put out, uh, but nothing's official yet. Schools have to July 31st to uh, give a plan to the state of how they're going to operate going forward. And uh, next week, I have the honor of, of having President Havidon uh, from UAlbany and President Gibson from Siena College coming in to talk about how they transform their university, uh, universities and how the students are coming back and international students and all that, which was great stuff. And it was a great meeting I had with them. So uh, before I turn over to questions, I do want to say again, um, people are creative out there, and uh, I'm actually enjoying my boss from the New York Army National Guard, Kelly Flancher, who does these TikTok videos. We need to get back to work so we can stop these videos, and uh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, my uh, brother Brian, who's celebrating 12 years sober today. Brian, keep the chains moving and plugging the jug, doing a great job. To everyone out there struggling with addiction, uh, it's harder now through these difficult times because of meetings and everything else. But uh, again, uh, keep up the hard work out there, man. I'm proud of you, brother, and everyone else out there with your daily struggles on top of all this going on.